right, well, we'll get started. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our Elevate Business HC webinar entitled Human Resources, an Overview of Hiring Practices in the Virtual Age. My name is Victoria Marley, and I'm with the Minneapolis Regional Chamber of Commerce. To get us started here, I'm going to go over just a few housekeeping details. Um, today, uh, you don't have audio or video, but we do encourage you to put um, all your questions in the chat bar below, um, or even um, preferably Q&A with the webinar feature that we have today. And then we'll get to those questions um, after the presentation. Uh, today's webinar is hosted by uh, Sarah Gresham. Uh, she's the Senior Recruiting Business Partner for MRA. Um, Valerie Grubry was originally supposed to be here today, but due to illness, um, we have Sarah joining us. So again, Sarah, thank you so much for being here today. Um, Sarah is an experienced talent management leader with a track record of success in helping organizations solve complex recruitment and retention challenges through integrated strategies for talent acquisition, performance management, rewards, and retention. She is an advocate of future-focused leadership strategy, succession planning, executive coaching, talent pipeline building, and data-driven decision-making. As a talent leader, she helps her clients build the culture needed for success by maintaining a keen focus on talent acquisition, and retention, forging strong relationships with staff. Throughout her career, she has demonstrated the ability to transform ideas into specific goal-driven results in response to employees, and clients' greatest needs. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Sarah. Thank you so much. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy to be here with you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here momentarily. Can everybody see the presentation okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you very much for the warm welcome. I am glad to be here, as I said. So just talking kind of on a, a getting into, you know, the moment that we're in, um, obviously this has been a, um, it goes without saying a unique time for all of us. It's presented its challenges and um, really talking through kind of starting from kind of where we were, where we are, where we're headed um, and talk through some best practices that relates to um, uh, the, a virtual hiring or hiring in a virtual age, if you will. I'm sorry, my apologies. For some reason, my slides are not advancing, so bear with me. Pardon me. Here we go. There we go. Um, you've heard enough about me, so we'll move on from there. <laughs> Just a little bit about who MRA is, real quickly. Um, we are. Um, your total HR resource, we're a member association here located um, in four regions, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, um, providing HR services, uh, learning and development resources, as well as total rewards, compensation, and then of course, talent management to include recruiting, retention, and reference check and background as well. So here are our topics um, in terms of what we're going to touch on today. So really looking at our new virtual world in recruiting and employee engagement. A lot has changed in the last eight to nine months. Um, and then best, practice, best practices during the candidate experience and what that uh, recommendations on what that should look like even now. Um, and then talk about communication and branding um, and key considerations to show um, really how to show up looking your best. So talking about some stats, really looking at um, May to December and um, you know what's changed, what's not changed, um, but talking about kind of where we were to, to where we are now closing in at September on some of our, our surveys that we completed. So you can take a look at, you know, right kind of almost sort of mid way into the pandemic here, we did a hot topic survey talking about recruitment and hiring plans in the next 90 days. Um, I'm certain many of you on the call were probably thinking, I'm not sure how to predict or what to predict, and perhaps maybe you're still in that space. But if you take a look at what um, our members told us, 41% um, um, had decided and determined they were going to recruit for mission critical jobs only, right? So probably hands-on, essential employers, um, and then also the largest number there, I think, is um, a big one that sticks out is really to recruit, to retain, right? So 32% said 
we've really got to recruit to retain and accommodate for any um, recruiting or any turnover. So really changes to recruitment selection and the onboarding process. Um, you know, we slight changes here, but 10% talked about scripting information for recruiters to address applicants' concerns over job security or workplace safety. Um, you know, now we're so far into it, that's probably commonplace, I would imagine, as part of that conversation. You know, do I have to work on site? Is this a remote position? Um, what are you doing to keep me safe, right, in the workplace? And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, selection, um, the, almost 40% of people back in May had already moved all their interviews to phone or video interviews. Um, and then even conducting final interviews um, that had previously been done in person um, to be video and uh, voice. So I know even here at MRA, um, as a best practice, we've been doing that quite a bit as well. So in terms of onboarding, uh, again, back in May, I know that's probably seems like a million years ago, but uh, kind of talking about where we were to where we're headed, um, moving new employee orientation um, to a virtual platform, you know, talk about candidate experience, we'll touch on that. And not surprisingly in May, um, a 24, almost 25% of people said, we don't know, you know, we're not quite sure yet. And then looking into moving ahead into September, um, talking about um, MRA's comp trends, you know, 99% of our organizations that were uh, surveyed um, stated that retaining is either very important or important, um, as you can see here, um, and close to about 87% are working hard to attract new talent. Um, you know, so that's, again, even here going into September, how many months into the pandemic people are still looking at hiring and, and really focused on employee engagement. So let's talk about candidate and employee engagement. So there's a lot of myths um, out in the market. Uh, one of the ones we hear a lot, uh, with lots of talent available, we can get, uh, get a great hire for a lower salary, right? I think there's a lot of information going on in the market that's saying, um, even in the pandemic, you know, people are either being um, downsized or there's a lot of turnover. Um, but really, um, if we look at what the facts are based on our research, um, you know, if employers undercut a candidate's salary requirements, um, they may leap for a higher salary when the market recovers. So keep those things in mind. You know, here when we're in the middle of the pandemic, while budget is important, um, also keeping in mind that if you're talking about retention, you know, we've got vaccines coming out, we've got, you know, hopefully some positive things moving forward here into the future. Um, be mindful of that when we're talking about um, hiring um, in a virtual world. In terms of candidate experience, um, not keeping in mind that this shouldn't change, right? So start with empathy for the candidate and the hiring team. Always be transparent and clear um, and continue to be thinking about the human element. Um, I think sometimes we've become this far into the pandemic so ingrained in, oh, this is the technology, we're going virtual, we're here, but don't lose sight of the human element, right? Um, and even though this is virtual and it might feel like we're moving quickly, um, make sure that you're still consistent and regular in your communication. Um, you know, I always remind people we're so ingrained right now in the, the videos and the emails and the voicemails don't forget to, that we still have a, a telephone. Um, that, well, that probably is to some an old tool. Pick up the phone and call people. You know, emails are great. It's an efficient way to communicate. I know we use texting tools, um, but don't forget that conversation is still invaluable, even when we're doing follow-up uh, virtual interviews. Um, in terms of your e-onboarding, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that. Again, that should still have structure consistency, expectations. I am the candidate. What am I What am I getting? If you just send me an invite and there's no detail, I'm going to have questions, right? That's going to send a message about what your organization is really going to do for me or how are you going to support me, especially if I'm working remotely. Again, I talked about consistent and regular communication. Um, that is so important, especially now and moving quickly, even more now than ever, right? When we've got essential employers hiring people on at the door, <laughs> they come in and they say, great, can you start now? Um, if you're waiting days to contact people and get back to them, um, you're going to lose. Um, so again, that that's a, a, a key thing. And then making sure that you're 
candidate experience is hand in hand with your brand. You know, we might be using different tools to communicate, but what does your what are you saying about your organization? Are you including, we'll talk a little bit about this, about videos about your organization? Are you leveraging the technology that you have access to? All of those tools. Um, one of the things we also talk about is um, virtual um, office uh, tours, right? Um, those, oops, apologize. Um, all of those things that, you know, just because they're not there now, maybe you'll have people on site in three, four, five, six months. What, what is their office going to look like? You know, leverage those tools as well as a realistic um, job preview. You know, take, take a video of um, what they might be doing on a daily basis. Show them the shop floor. Um, you know, show them where, what their expectation is um, or just send them a picture of a fellow employee in, in PPE and what it looks like. You know, we're, we're doing so much remotely and virtually, people still want to know what to expect. And really those candidate experience touch points. Um, again, I mentioned, you know, video interviews is a great way to engage. Um, the video process, you know, update this often because it changes. I think we even talked about as we were getting our meeting started today, um, the technology updates. Um, especially now we become so comfortable with this video format that sometimes we forget, oh, we need to, to double check or we need to make sure there hasn't been an update. Again, all of those things are, are key to a candidate's experience. Um, Pre-hire assessments, um, that's a great way right now to continue another touch point, another step to engage your candidates. Again, don't forget and don't skip steps in the process. And really continuing to enable those effective virtual interviews. You know, making sure the people that are doing the interviewing are comfortable with the platform and the technology. You know, an interview should never feel like a test, right? You're going in, you're being, it, it should feel like you're asking good questions, um, you're prepared with questions, you're setting level, you're a level setting expectations for the candidate, but don't them make them walk away feeling like they're tested, unless, of course, that's already set up as part of the expectation, um, or I'm sending you an assessment, or I'm sending you this ahead of time. Um, interview agenda, um, that's, again, one that may sound um, easy, um, but again, sending more than just a Zoom, a Zoom or a Teams link, right? C continue, um, send the agenda, give them the detail let them know what to expect. You know, it might be a different platform, but I'm still gonna to wanna to know who am I meeting with? What am I gonna be expected to speak to? Um, make sure they feel prepared, make sure they have the link. You know, take take a, you know, a few minutes beforehand, especially if you're, excuse me, scheduling the interview with a hiring manager, call the candidate. Say, do you have any questions? You know, you want them to feel like they're set up for success too. Did you, were you able to open the technology? Do you have what you need? Um, again, still focusing on that behavioral based interview. Again, make it conversational, engage, especially in the video format. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that nine months in, you know, most of us have had the experience to, to use video technology. They're becoming more comfortable with it. Um, but just because you're on video doesn't mean we don't want to be personable and we don't want to be engaging. I mentioned again that virtual job shadow a great way to send a quick video link. We all walk around with phones in our, our pockets. Um, we have access to YouTube, um, or quite frankly, we have video on our phones now. Um, send them a quick video. Say, here's our office. Welcome to where you might be in six months. Or here's an example of um, what your day might look like. You know, walk them through an office. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you don't need to go hire a video crew, um, but those are great tools. And we actually have some tools available where we can record those for you. And candidate feedback and evaluation, again, you know, we're doing things, we're engaging people differently, but so critical and so important. I can't tell you how many times I, I tell people, oh, I've a, or I've heard from a candidate, I applied for that job and nobody caught, I had never heard anything. Or I've interviewed over the last six months and I thought I had a great video interview, but then I never heard anything, right? And, and what does that message say about your organization? That has not changed. Our platform, our environment might be different. We might be working from home, but that's so key. If people are, so talking about another myth um, or fact, um, one of the myths we like to talk about is people are currently employed. They are not looking for jobs right now. 
I can tell you that is not true. <laughs> so I, I talk with um, people are looking. Many are at home and are able to connect with recruiters really now more than ever before. Think about it, right? I'm no longer sitting in my cube. Um, if a recruiter says, hey, can you uh, talk over your lunch hour? Yes, I can, because I'm at my kitchen table and my boss isn't going to know who I'm talking to, right? So differently accessible um, when th than they were before, um, when we were all in offices and maybe didn't have the, feel like we had the, the flexibility that we might have had um, in terms of communicating. Um, as I mentioned, um, know your technology and leverage it. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about earlier, you know, the virtual onboarding, the preparedness. Um, make sure you have a plan, prepare your best practices, um, and make sure you share those with your hiring managers. Because keeping in mind, if you're an organization that hasn't hired for a while and you're in a region or a state um, where you're on lockdown or you're at stay at home, your manager might not have interviewed right, for the last six months or prior. So they are not, interviewing is not their expertise, but now you're asking them to do a virtual interview, something they may never have done before. So making sure you're leveraging your technology, but making sure you're, um, you're uh, making sure your hiring managers feel good and are prepared as well. Um, the um, email, is another great way. Again, as I talked about, you know, the phone, don't let go of the opportunity to pick up the phone. Um, but making sure your emails still remain confident or a uh, conversation as well. Now, I'm not suggesting you want to put a ton of emojis in there and, and go overboard, you know, when you're communicating, but show your personality a little bit, you know, be professional, be concise. Um, but really think about leaving that lasting impression. You know, that's really what we look at as part of the consulting process. Show your personality a little bit in your communication. Um, you know, obviously know your organization, know your compliance, um, but that's a great way to continue to, you know, engage the conversation and make it more personal. Um, social media, of course, is an, a tremendous way to engage candidates, especially now when they're different, they have different accessibility. Um, you know, obviously people are at home and they're focused and they're working. Um, but, you know, again, on my lunch hour, I'm working from home. Someone, I might have more opportunity to check a Facebook post or reaching out to me on LinkedIn differently than I may have had, you know, where I, where I'm sitting in my offices, you know, um, it's a great way to build the pipeline too. you know, another, a different way to communicate, um, you know, think about Facebook as well as, um, meetup groups, you know, um, a lot of recruiters that I'm talking to myself included, another great way to build a pipeline is use uh, groups, meetups. If you're not familiar, it's a platform, especially right now, it's been fairly active. Um, before the pandemic, uh, individuals would uh, form groups as uh, everything from I'm, I'm running a running group to a reading group to a gardening group, and I'll meet you at the gardening plot or I'll meet you at the coffee shop and we'll go run from there. Well, now, it's become virtual and so they're talking, right? So if you're hiring an engineer, maybe you can look up, there's a meetup group for engineers or a meetup group for HR professionals. They're still engaged and they're still uh, communicating. So be creative, right? Differently in how we would go to find um, candidates as well. Different than in, for example, physical places. Again, this does not, should not change you know, treating candidates with, with respect kind of seems like a no brainer. Um, but as I shared, you know, some hiring managers are either not prepared are not comfortable. And sometimes, you know, they unknowingly um, may do something that is comes off as disrespectful, right to a candidate. Um, I was recently shared a story with um, a friend of mine who went in for an interview. Um, and it was an on site interview because it was manufacturing. He was taken to the a conference room by the HR leader and was left there for and was told somebody would come back to get him and meet him, i.e. the hiring manager, to speak with him or take him through the interview process. Well, he was sitting there and he says, OK, well, five minutes, you know, maybe somebody is a little late. OK, well, that went to five to 20 to 15 or to 20 to 25 to 30 to 45 minutes. He was sitting alone with a mask on in a conference room. And again, wherever the miscommunication happened, he said, I, I hated to do it, but I had to leave. You know, I was there on my lunch hour expecting that I was going to meet with somebody. 
you know, for a half hour conversation and then get back to work. So again, what are the, what's the process? What are the expectations? Maybe that just means that you're setting that clear, you send them an agenda. You know, HR manager is going to put them in conference room A, socially distanced, don't sit, you know, six, as we're talking, right? The reality, six feet apart. Um, and then at 12.05, Bob's supervisor or Jane's supervisor is going to come and grab you and we're going to go from there, right? So again, and, and he, he has no desire to go back to that company nor work there. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, setting real ex expectations, that kind of goes along that right line, right? Um, how long will the interview be? You know, again, with timing, especially if you're talking about on-site interviews, making sure they're comfortable. Do you, are you practicing social distance? Uh, and do, are you providing PPE? Or are you expecting them? Are you taking a temperature at the door? What are the things, what can I expect, right? And let them know that the time and also make sure your hiring managers, again, now more important than ever, are meeting that time. Because if you're doing a virtual interview and we're talking about candidates who have different access to you, right? They might be working from home. They might have squeezed in literally 30 minutes to have a conversation on a video meeting. You get a hiring manager in that platform and they are just going way over. The candidate is then in an awkward situation. Perhaps maybe they're late for another video meeting. I mean, all of these things need to still be um, in place. Um, and again, still making hiring a priority, right? We've got so many things going on right now. Um, you know, it's, sometimes this is a tough one for hiring managers. Um, you know, I have a, a, did a round table yesterday and we were talking about planning and hiring into 2021. Um, and that was one of the topics that came up. You know, sometimes I think hiring managers forget, um, those of us sometimes depending on what our jobs are, it's gotta be a priority, right? Getting our hiring managers engaged stick with them, follow up with them, um, show them your value, communicate, you know, even if it's a quick 15 minute call each week, let them know where you're at. Um, you know, and it might also mean being that realistic or sometimes like to say peeling the onion back and saying, um, here's what I can do, here's what I can't do in terms of uh, the process, here's what's accessible, here's what's not. So being realistic, um, but still making hiring a priority. Again, the communicate effectively, as I mentioned, um, as in all the time, right? So we might be working from home, we might be feeling a little more isolated, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't prevent us from, again, that quick personable email, a quick 15 minute touch base, um, and of course, always that phone call. And then um, again, continuing to keep, same thing, can communicate your can with your candidates, regularly, often, um, make it personable, continue to keep them engaged. And then of course, be on time. Uh, that sounds like a, a silly thing, but an obvious thing, but that's still a, a big um, a big deal, as I mentioned with people um, ha maybe having tighter schedules. Again, talking about candidates, um, really challenging the candidate as well, have good questions, be prepared. You know, make sure you have engaging questions prepared um, for the hiring managers and yourself included. Um, as mentioned, give an inside view of your culture. Do you have video testimonies? I talked about that earlier. Um, you know, what are you sharing? Give them a realistic preview of what goes on in your organization. Um, if the reality is, look, I'm working from home. Here's my home office. You know, here's ideally, you know, the environment that we'd like for you to be in. All of those things. But but let them see what it's like. Um, Another great way to do um, engage is I've seen companies even through through the onboarding and hiring is engage them through in a, excuse me, virtual happy hour. You know, maybe they haven't been hired yet, but you want them to meet some of your colleagues. Hey, can you join us for a virtual happy hour at 430? It's just a quick 15 to 30 minute high, grab a cocktail of your choice at home um, and get to know us a little bit. You know, bring your questions. We'd, we'd love to get to meet you. So. Um, a little bit different, but a great way to engage a candidate. And then as mentioned, you know, be proactive about giving feedback. Um, sorry about that. Um, so again, keeping your candidates warm, engaging them differently. You know, maybe you invite them to a virtual team meeting if it's appropriate. All of those things to differently engage them that we might not be thinking about if we were following that typical process of 
phone interview. Yep, come for in for an in-person interview. I've asked you all the questions. I've sent you all the assessments and we're done, right? So how are we differently engaging our, our candidates? One of the other myths um, that we like to share is unemployment is so high, employers are in control. Um, those of you on the call might agree, right? The fact is the market recovers, continues to recover, candidates will be even more choosy than before, right? So they know what's been out there. Perhaps they were downsized by a, a different opportunity or organization. And now they're saying, you know what? I don't want that anymore. I wanna pick and choose. Um, I have my priorities. Um, really, and we talk about four steps to candidate success, you know, don't be afraid to customize your message. Um, know the career path. You know, what, what's in it for the candidate? Do you have that? You know, if I'm coming in as, as a, an associate, um, how long might it take me? You know, or on the other side of that, you know, we, our organization's kind of flat. You might, you might get great opportunity, but no, you're not going to be a vice president in six months. That's just not our structure, but making sure you set that up front. Um, you know, listen twice as much as you talk, right? That's a thing I think when you're in a virtual platform, um, that kind of feels weird for me to say right now because that's what I'm doing, talking at everybody here this morning, um, but really be that listener. You know, find out what they want. Is it career advancement? Um, ask them what that means. Don't, don't assume you know what that means. For some people, as I mentioned earlier, it's title. For some people, it might mean I want different and unique projects. Um, I don't want to be doing the same thing. I don't care what you call me, but I want to feel engaged and I want exciting work to do. Again, listen. Uh, listen more than you talk. You might be surprised by the response. And then really, what can go wrong? You know, you think about the negative um, human impacts. Um, you know, we have to work a bit harder really to ensure our candidates, as I'm, I'm mentioning here this morning, are receiving that personal touch really even in a virtual world, right? Um, it's a big change to go from shaking hands, right? To sitting in a room across the table um, and really sometimes having to make a hiring decision without even me uh, meeting someone, right? So, you know, how does that feel? Um, but making sure that you've made it a positive experience, you've used in the tools to provide an engaged um, experience um, even if you don't end up hiring that person. So they walk away feeling like, you know what? Okay, that didn't work out, um, but I might come back to them in six months versus being left alone in a conference room for 45 minutes and having to leave because you had to get back to work. So again, that's kind of an extreme example, but imagine, you know, that's an experience, right? And being mindful, you know, our hiring managers are, are, are struggling, right? You know, they're struggling with all kinds of, we can only imagine COVID and lack of, staff and all these other things that they're doing, you know, be, be respectful of that, be supportive, you know, um, and understand that sometimes our candidates don't always have access to the technology that we assume they do. So again, how are we engaging them? You know, how are we getting them involved in the process? Um, you know, the reality is ghosting, you know, comes from a, a dating term I, I learned a, <laughs> a few years ago, but you know, that's the truth. You know, what can go wrong? The fallout rates. We still, we're seeing that more and more, right? We, we say, yep, be here Tuesday, bingo. Nobody, you know, where'd they go? Or interviews, you know, so you've got to uh, be mindful of that. And then again, the lack of access to reliable technology. You know, we, some of us become so accustomed in these platforms, not everybody that we're trying to recruit has access to that, right? So how are we trying to engage them differently um, and make sure that, you know, you are willing to work with candidates uh, and how you can and be flexible. I had um, um, one member who, again, while it's simple, um, was in a clinical um, environment and their um, infection control nurse said, absolutely, no one is coming in here. I don't care how bad we need people. And so she got creative. She set up a tent on the back porch, um, got a heater, set chairs six feet apart and said, hey, can you come and meet me on the back porch? You won't have to go inside. We'll sit outside with masks. You and I can sit down six feet apart and we can have a discussion, right? Sounds simple, but a great way to engage people. So talking about pre-boarding and onboarding, again, um, it starts 
way before day one, you know, what are, what are the impression that you're giving? Are you being consistent in your messaging? How did you reach out to them? What, how are you engaging them? Um, it starts before you even really schedule that interview. What does your messaging look like? Have you been engaging? Um, you know, a lot of us talk about how long does pre-boarding and onboarding last? You know, some people say 30, 60, 90 days. Um, it takes as long as it needs to take. Um, you know, it may take the entire business cycle, right? An entire year, depending on what your fiscal. Don't assume that at 90 days you've done your job, right? They might have completed and checked the boxes off of things at 90 days, but that doesn't mean that onboarding um, is done, right? And that leads us to, you know, culture assimilation. You know, we might be making assumptions about still, I've told you, I've given you everything you need, I've given you the PPE, you should be fine. That doesn't mean that they're going to assimilate in your culture. They have the tools to do the job. How are you continuing to engage people differently? You know, are you having those, as I mentioned, virtual happy hours? Or if you're a manufacturing company, um, you know, how are you differently engaging? Well, you can't eat in the lunchroom, but maybe you're providing a box lunch once a week. You know, what are you doing with these folks? Um, Micro learning is another great way to keep people engaged. You know, time, especially for the essential employers, um, you know, there might not be a lot of extra time, but micro learnings are a great way um, to, to help with that onboarding. Um, it's a really kind of a flash training, 15 to 25 minutes of content um, that can be broken up over different periods of time. Um, so one, you're not overwhelming somebody with a, all day long of, of training and going, my head is going to explode. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all that information to, oh, also, um, I understand it, but now there's a, um, I, I'm maybe as an employee, I'm looking forward to another little break or you as the HR manager or hiring leader, now you have multiple opportunities to continue to engage through these micro learnings. And then again, that personalization, we really need to continue to personalize the onboarding, right? So if you learn something about an employee or they volunteer or something, or you know that they perhaps have shared they like a certain candy or whatever that might be, um, but it might not be specific to a, um, the same person as I said to that, um, but making sure you're customizing it as appropriate. You know, we're not in a one size fits all onboarding. Um, you know, maybe somebody does have all day long to, to do based on their schedule to do the onboarding, but then another person, it might work better to do those micro learnings. And making sure you know who owns it, right? Have a plan have a schedule. You might own part of it as the hiring leader or the HR person, um, but then where does it go from there? And where, where does the, what is the employee going to be expecting, right? Who owns it? And then talking about employee engagement, what employees want, right? Especially now we talk a lot about diversity and inclusion um, as well as really that sense of belonging, right? How am I going to fit into this culture? And what are you doing to engage your employees? You know, we, we can't forget the part about, you know, whether it's through a micro learning or multi-engagement, or if it's appropriate, a quick text, if a week, a couple weeks in, how are you doing? How's it going? What can, you, what can I do? What can I help you with? Um, but really that's an opportunity to not only continue to engage, but also elevate your brand. You know, my brand is at my company, I take care of my employees, even in the pandemic or even more so than my, the pandemic. And then really talking about your brand equals your reputation, right? So now more than ever, when people are going online, they're looking at information, um, what, what are you doing and what are you saying, right? Do you have a COVID-19 update page? Maybe you don't have the, the capacity to do an entire website, but you can put a PDF out there and that can be updated, right? So what are, use your resources. Um, really thinking about still, again, now more than ever with people having time to look or really looking or having choices, you know, working to craft your career page for the candidate, not the customer. A lot of times we see, we go to a company and I click on a career page and the first thing it lead is we have the best uh, generators, blah, blah, blah. That's great. I, I want to work for a company that sells a reputable company, but what are, what's in it for me? Where are your values? 
what am I going to get? Professional development, training, um, a free lunch, what, whatever it might be, right? And again, level setting expectations, um, letting them know um, what to expect. You know, if you are an essential employer, yeah, you need to be here. I need you to be here in the plant. This is not a remote position, right? Be consistent in your messaging. Um, again, if you're updating or you're expecting an update, again, making sure that messaging is consistent. If you have the luxury or the opportunity to partner with marketing, you know, they're creative. They can come up with great opportunities to help you um, create that employee value proposition, proposition um, working on, um, again, what's in it for me as the candidate. Again, now more than ever, you know, what are you doing to keep me safe? Um, am I expected to come into the office or can I work remotely or am I working remotely for the for six months and then I'm going to be expected to come back into the office, right? Um, and that just really goes to talking about the new way of work, showing them you have a plan, um, letting them know, you know, yes, you, um, you know, we've had individuals that we've hired that have committed and understand that in six months, they're going to be in the office. They might live an hour and a half away from the office now, but they've already communicated. Nope, I'm in the process of relocating. I'm moving closer to the office. I understand that's a, that's a future expectation. But again, that, and there's that piece of showcasing your, your organization, uh, what they're doing to support your employees right now. Important just to note around that employee brand, um, Job seekers, 60% uh, of job seekers uh, would accept a lower salary if the company has positive reviews online. So really talking about going from your career page to your job postings to where people are getting information on your company, watch that, follow that, right? Especially if you've been impacted by the pandemic, perhaps you've had had to, you know, you were involved in a riff or a layoff. Um, what, are, what are employees saying, you know? Perhaps it, you know, that happens and it's okay, um, but how did you handle that and how did you manage that for the employees? Um, the employees consider leaving, 84% of employers consider leaving their current jobs for a company with a better reputation. And then, you know, talking about the one of the largest growing groups in the workforce, the millennials believe that being a part of the right company culture is important, right? So what, what are you are you socially conscious or what's going on um, within your organization? And really talking about why that brand is important. Um, again, now more than ever, um, we can retain good employees, engage employee engagement, um, reduce cost, right? Turnover, if people wanna stay, um, you can really talk about decreasing time to fill, candidates are engaged, um, you get your organization to a place where people are, are coming to you, right? What a great thing. Um, you know, an opportunity to humanize, as I mentioned, your company as an employer. Um, what do we do for our employees? You know, maybe we're not um, in the offices, but we've chosen to um, support a particular cause who's being impacted by the pandemic. You know, is that appropriate? Um, but talk about those things. Um, and then be transparent about your employee brand um, and what you do have to offer your employees. And maybe it's changed. You know, maybe temporarily you've reduced benefits. Maybe you have um, to overcompensate that you've reduced benefits from a cost, but you've added vacation, whatever that might be, make sure they know that up front. And really those key components to the brand um, is really, again, know your employee value prop employer value proposition. Why do you work there? Do you have one? What, what, why do people wanna be a part of this organization? Look at your career page, make sure you're selling the job, not the product. Um, Make sure you're using job advertisements, not job descriptions. Um, I know you've all heard this, but even now when we perhaps maybe have more access to screen time, more downtime, more people are at home, more time to look at jobs. You know what, if your job is too long and too lengthy, they're going on to the next one. So um, the culture and the core values, uh, again, are, are key and components. Um, I'll talk a little bit about employer advocacy and then your company reviews online, and then of course that social media. But really the, the key components uh, quickly here about the employer value proposition, um, don't be afraid to share your social elements of work, as I mentioned, right? So what are you doing differently? Maybe it's a virtual happy hour, or you're a socially conscious organization, um, or your social element is we have Friday hours or whatever that might be, um, what does that look like now? 
make sure you're talking about the interesting and challenging work tasks. Again, we talked about earlier, right? If I'm an employee, I might not necessarily see career development or career advancement as you promoting me or changing my title, but what are you gonna do for me and what's unique and interesting about your organization? Um, to the extent of which my skills can be applied um, in meaningful ways. Um, I was recently working with a pharmaceutical company, for example, and yes, it might all sound very scientific and um, how do I wanna, I'm at a loss for words. However, but what they were doing is they were really making an impact because they were creating, taking formulas and creating drugs that save the lives of others, right? That to me is very meaningful work. Yeah, there's some very specific scientific requirements and skills, but how do you tie that in to your value proposition? Again, those opportunities for professional development, I mentioned earlier, um, listen more, talk less, find out what the candidates really are looking for from a, retention, a recruiting and retention perspective. Um, are there economic issues tied to compensation? You know, be transparent about that. You know, at this point in time, we've reduced our wage to, um, I know I mentioned, you know, don't be paying less people, people paying less intentionally as part of our fact or myths that we talked about, but maybe that's where you're at right now, you know, or maybe temporarily you've, re you've had to reduce your or eliminate your bonus program, but the intent is to bring it back, you know, let them know that up front. And then really, again, what is the role of management, whether it be in the interview process, the leadership process, what are managers expected to do within your organization? and from an employee engagement perspective. And then what about work-life balance? Is that something you talk about? Is that realistic? Um, is that something that you offer? Or what does that look like? Or your work-life balance is the reality. We are a 24-hour operation. We run two 12-hour shifts. That's it, right? Okay, that balance looks different at different organizations. Again, as I mentioned earlier, be active with that employee brand. Um, and re review your employer sites, look at your social media, um, don't forget about that career page. And then really, again, don't forget what makes your organization unique. You know, what is different? What, what makes you different than the bank down the street? If you're in a, a bank, what's different? What's unique about your culture differently than the, the organization down the street? Again, the stakeholders, even in a virtual environment, um, you know, really partner with your hiring leaders um, and marketing to communicate what you're doing for your candidates and employees. Um, be transparent, um, be consistent, listen. Um, you know, this is not just a responsibility of the recruiter and HR. All leaders within your organization are stakeholders. Um, I talk about my poor friend, Mike, that got left in a conference room. That was on the hiring manager. I mean, one could assume, right? Or maybe it was on HR, there was lack of communication. But again, the stakeholders, how, what's the process? Um, how are we involved? Um, and, and really having everybody involved in the culture of the organization. Again, keeping mindful of purposeful best practices. As I mentioned with onboarding, um, you know, have a plan, be, be purposeful. Um, one size doesn't always fit all but really making sure you have a plan, but yet keeping it simple, don't overcomplicate it. Go ahead and customize communication. Um, as I mentioned, even when your emails, you know, be bold and have open conversations. Hey, we're all learning right now. If it's not working, go back and change it. You know, make, it, make an improvement. Um, maybe one platform isn't working. Okay, maybe do we have the opportunity to change it? But build that into every step of your process, being purposeful um, and, being uh, consistent in your practices. Um, you know, be able to change with the moment. I mean, that goes without saying at month nine, almost 10, here we are in the pandemic, change, right? Change with the moment, change your process. Maybe you have to get somebody else involved and really looking into the future. You know, I think all of us right now in the pandemic are thinking, oh, thank goodness, it's about to be 2021. I could put 2020 in, <laughs> in the background. Um, but really, you know, think about dear past, thank you for all the lessons and dear future, I'm ready. So um, any last minute questions that you have for me? Well, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it looks like we've got a number of questions coming in. Um, and please do put your questions in the Q&A or chat. Um, 
So one of the questions is uh, ghosting applicants uh, was something that happened in the real world before the pandemic. Uh, you mentioned how important it is to provide feedback and evaluation. Uh, how do you suggest best to do that? Um, so there's a number of different ways. I mean, there's tools. Um, again, there's the, are, are, I guess I'm understanding that. Is that a two part question? Is that about ghosting or is that providing feedback? I think providing the feedback from the okay. applicants and. Okay. Um, I think again, a great way to do that. Um, you can, I know I do a lot of times I will, depending on knowing the person's schedule, um, craft a very respectful email, letting them know that, you know, we've, we've chosen a different candidate for this particular time. Um, and really, again, still in this environment, the phone, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and just thank them very much for their experience, their opportunity to, to meet the team um, and let them know. And even now in this environment, one of the things that I've done over the last six to eight months is when I've had people who I've interviewed, who you could tell were very nervous on video or, or weren't comfortable I will provide that feedback, you know, be honest, like I said, be transparent and let them know, gosh, you know what, you've had really good questions, but you seem a little nervous. You know, I might recommend that you maybe practice talking to yourself into your cell phone or practice talking into a mirror. So that feels more natural and more comfortable as you continue to do virtual interviews. Mm -hmm. um, another question that came in is I mean, now with, you know, the COVID, everything is based on technology. How, what do you suggest uh, for employers, uh, for those applicants that maybe don't have access to technology? What kind of, you know, new aspects uh, should we incorporate? Yeah, so um, when you're talking about technology being computers, laptops, those kind of things, um, I err on the side of, I think, most of the, the candidates that I work with um, at least have access to a cell phone. And so, um, you know, texting tools is a great way. Um, you know, I don't advocate for people using a personal cell phone, but if you have um, a cell phone, uh, you know, a lot of the applicant tracking systems now, you know, even have um, chat bots that can be done on a phone through um, an app, um, as well as texting uh, app applications. We use one through a, our vendor called Modern Hire, which is a great way to blast out um, either feedback on interviews as well as to, to, to reach candidates. Now, granted, I know you have to have a phone number and able to do that, um, but that's a great way to continue to engage people is even that texting on the phone. Yeah, right, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, even just, just your cell phone can yep. be that, that technology tool. Yep. It doesn't have to be something that's a formal laptop or yep. um, other device. Uh, let's see, other question. Love the idea of a virtual job shadow or introducing the potential uh, coworkers. Uh, what tips do you have to make sure that that is in fact a helpful process and not the opposite? Yep, absolutely. So I always, you know, I don't recommend too many cooks in the kitchen, but even when I talk about this in some of the recruiting classes I train, you know, make sure you understand the message that you want to have. So almost think of it like, I encourage you to even set up kind of a, um, almost I, not necessarily, but a loose script. What do you want to cover? What do you want the candidate to see? Who do you want to be involved? Now, realistic is key here. I'm not suggesting you um, falsify or, um, you know, I don't know, scrub the floor in the, in the manufacturing plant if it's in fact kind of a dirty environment. That's important for people to see. Um, but then also when I was mentioning, you know, I don't recommend having everybody involved, but if you're an organization that's adherent to safety, and compliance or HIPAA, you know, just make sure that if that's the case, that's fine. Go and show them the hospital room, show them their work environment, but make sure there's no patients in the background. There's no, I mean, this all sounds very obvious, but those are all things that, you know, could potentially go wrong. Um, and don't overcomplicate it. You know, I've seen them even, hi, my name is uh, Sarah. I work at MRA. Um, come and join me as I walk down the hallway into our cafe. And so it might even just be one person who is volunteering to do a quick little intro and welcome to my lobby. And I love working here because, you know, so it could be that simple. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's with all the HIPAA, there is those regulations, but it's great to, you know, just the basics is so important, yeah. too. Let's see. Another question is um, for smaller businesses who might not have an HR department, 
um, what kind of, what are the key components um, do you recommend uh, for those who are just uh, kind of doing it on their own? Yep. So I would still, if you're doing it on your own, have a consistent process. You know, think about if operationally or you have other parts of your role, um, take a few moments to write a quick SOP. Here's what our recruiting process looks like as an organization. We might be small and mighty, but you know, the first thing is I'm going to call the person. I'm going to ask them these first five questions um, to include, you know, maybe it's, you know, again, if you're compliant, is it education? Is it pay? What does that look like? Um, the next step is I'm going to then uh, bring them in for a social distance interview, or we're then going to schedule. So again, just get back to the basics, you know, the one, two, three, four, five, what are the steps? And so everybody knows what to do, how to follow them, um, even if you're working outside of an HR department, because that really helps that candidate experience, especially if you're small. Um, but also if you're with a smaller organization, I think that's even an opportunity, in my opinion, to be a little bit more informal, um, if that's your culture. So, you know, invite them again to that. If you, if you do um, a virtual happy hour, if that's your organization, maybe you only have seven people, you know, hey, come and meet us. What do you think about our organization? You want to come and see us on Friday at 430? You know, you bring your tea, your coffee, your whatever your uh, <laughs> alcoholic beverage of choice um, and come join us. Come talk to us. See what you think of our organization. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great point. I, you brought that up earlier. And that was one of the things that I thought, too, was, oh, my gosh, now with it being so virtual, that is something that you can do. And the, the applicants then can really get a better sense of the culture and that because that is really, in my mind, too, a big piece for um, employees to stick around and to stay, um, you know, retained for their yep. businesses. See one more question, and um, please do keep um, putting in your questions. Um, we used to hear that uh, if uh, employees worked remotely, kind of put them in a pool um, to uh, not for promotions or advancements. Have you seen in in your um, uh, is that the case still, um, or what is the new normal with that? So you, if I'm understanding the question correctly, those people that perhaps are feeling like worked remotely you know, who um, now, because everyone's working remotely. Yeah. Um, but in the past, you know, if you were someone who was working remotely, that would really kind of, you know, put you out of the pool for promotions or advancement. Um, you're kind of looked on as, you know, someone kind of out of the picture. Um, but is that is that still the case? Or is that something now where, you know, everyone's more on an equal playing field? You know, that's a really great question. Uh, but I think that really depends on the culture of the organization. Is it why that sounds kind of um, maybe an easy way to answer the question, but it's truthful. I mean, this week I was talking with a, a credit union um, and their culture was very in the office, behind the desk, very much. Well, um, they have a, they're a smaller credit union. They have about, by, by comparison, about 400 employees, almost 200 of them are working remotely right now. So that was a big shift. And so then to keep that level of engagement. So you know, I think that in, in my my humble opinion is I think it is getting better because we are working remotely and we are doing our best to keep people engaged, you know, through virtual meetings, um, you know, but you as employers, there's opportunity to, to stay engaged too. You know, just because you're working remotely doesn't mean you can't insert yourself and say um, or encourage your employees to say, why don't you schedule a 15 minute touch base with your leader each week? get on their radar, you know, um, don't just because you're working remotely, I would encourage you to tell your teams, you know, insert yourself. What are you doing? Get on their radar screen um, and help to maybe change that culture. Um, but fundamentally, I think there's still organizations we work with with, I mean, this remote thing is very temporary in their minds. Um, and you just need to be getting ready to get back to work. So <laughs> it really does. I, I think it depends on the culture of the organization. It's very interesting, yeah, that there is that difference between, you know, different companies and what the culture is still. Um, well, let's see, without, uh, looks like that kind of wraps up the questions. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much. I mean, this has been just really interesting in terms of hearing what some of the new practices are with uh, COVID in the virtual world. But honestly, a lot of it has just been things to kind of keep in mind on an ongoing basis. I mean, mm -hmm. listening to the candidates and um, you know, just inviting them in to, to get that culture read before um, a hiring process. So 
and following up and the no ghosting and all those things that it was, you know, it just fun to hear that that's still kind of a common uh, issue. So um, things to kind of keep in mind for the future, but also kind of all, all, all the new uh, components too, to kind of think about too. So again, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we uh, love MRA has been a, a member of uh, Minneapolis uh, Chamber for uh, a number of years and we love having you as our host today. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, tomorrow we have another um, Elevate Business HC webinar. Uh, we look forward to uh, having many of you join us uh, for that one as well. Thanks so much, Sarah, and uh, I'll sign off. Thank, thank you. you all. Glad to be here. Have a great day.